Hey, fellow comic book fans, and welcome to episode number two of the Brazen Bull Podcast. I'm Charlie Chipman, and with me today is Dave Robbins. Hello, friends. And Ben Peterson. Hello. And today is Wednesday, February 7th, and it's New Comic Book Day. All right, guys, let's uh, jump right into it. Um, So we have a little bit of news. Um, DC... Um, just recently announced two new imprints that they're going to start this fall. Um, DC Zoom, which is going to be geared towards middle school readers, and DC Inc., which is going to be geared towards young adult readers. Um, what do we think about this, guys? Well, I mean, comic book stores are full of middle-aged guys now. So I think, uh, you know, they really they really need to, to start uh, building the next generation of, of comic book readers. they got to come from somewhere because... Uh, you know, old dudes like me are dying out. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent right there. Like, they, yeah, you have to keep building up your 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 base there, your fan base, and you know, we are all getting older. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and you know what? It seems like um, the approach that they're taking um, is, is the correct one. They're they're going to be putting out um, you know larger uh, books. You know, I, I had read something about you know. DC Inc., um, you know, the first one's going to be like 192 pages or something like that, 200 pages. Um, So I think they are going to kind of serve as this nice transition for young adult readers into comic books. You know, it'll be something that's relatively familiar to them. They could pick up this one book, get a big story out of it, and hopefully that's enough to hook them to a monthly series or bi-weekly or or whatever it may be so i i I think it's a good idea too i really do um and it seems like they're going to tap into the young adult um talent pool so i think that's great too let's you know go after established writers that you know young adult readers will recognize have them write some comic books and i think it's going to really bridge that gap you know Mm -hmm. because you guys are absolutely right you have to build that fan base um you know, because sometimes just putting out movies doesn't do it. I think movies does spread the awareness of Superman and Batman, but it doesn't necessarily build comic book readers. So correct. Yeah, it doesn't always translate that that way. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, on top of that, the uh, Swamp Thing Winter Special that came out, and um, it's one hell of a tribute. Um, I really, really like this book. Um, great one shot from, uh, Tom King, Jason Fabic. Um, like I said, I think it's an absolutely fantastic tribute to, um, Len Wayne who just passed. Um, and, uh, you guys read it. What'd you, uh, what'd you guys think about it? Uh, I agree with you on this one. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. It was very well done. Uh, a great tribute and just uh, a really good read. Um, it, you know, good writing, uh, great uh, artwork. I really have nothing, nothing to complain about except that it's a one-off. Yeah, yeah. That's that's always the the, the tough, tough uh, part about you know when you get a one shot that you absolutely absolutely love or you know a special edition. It's that's it. Yep. Well, I mean, I think that I mean I understand what you're saying about that, but. Uh... I think the purpose of a one-off is to bring in maybe people that are not that familiar with the with the character, with the product. And uh, you know what I found. Well, first of all, the the artwork was excellent, but you've got a character that that I'm not all that familiar with, but I, you know I am in tune to to his his pathos and and his his emotional content and his heroic nature really quickly mm-hmm. and and definitely um, you know become uh on his side right away which leads me to think that this is a character i need to know more about which may lead to me you know to to start you know start looking into the back catalog and 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 maybe some of the the newer newer stories about swamp thing Uh, certainly certainly seems something worthwhile to you know spend my time with absolutely uh, based on one you know one one shot alone yeah yeah definitely i i think that this If DC's plan, in addition to having um, Swamp Thing Winter Special serve as a tribute, if if the plan was to generate 
interest or, or rekindle some sort of excitement for Swamp Thing, I think they were absolutely successful. Um, you know, this this was a book that, aside from the the marketing of a character, so to speak, or you know, like I said, that rekindling of excitement and interest in a character, um, I think it was very well written. Um, very well written, very well paced, which is no surprise, um, considering it's a book from Tom King. I got a very uh, strong uh, Cormac McCarthy's uh, the, the Road, you know, uh, I got that feel from it. And it, it was it was emotional. I mean, I read the book probably four times already. And um, I don't typically do that with the comic. Um, twice? Yeah, I'll see if I can get something out of a really good comic again. Um, or maybe something, see if there was anything I overlooked. But this was one that, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed. And I just really want to spend more time with it. So back to Ben's point, like, I am also saddened by the fact that this is it for now, at least. I'm really hoping, um, I would love to see Tom King um, have an ongoing Swamp Thing, or at least another, you know, say a mini series, you know. Uh, six issue miniseries, twelve issue miniseries, something like that. I, I just, after reading this, I really want more Swamp Thing. Agreed. All right. Well, I, I have to talk about two of my favorite comic books that uh, are nearing the end of their near their the end of their cycle. Um, Coyote number four just finished up uh, their debut, and I think that that's uh, really been one of the best comic books of the season. So. Um, I'd have to recommend uh, that really the whole series, four issues of something that that somebody has to, uh, you know, start to pick up because there's nothing like it. And uh, similarly, uh, Extremity number 11 is nearing the end of that arc as well. And again, that's another unique approach. Um, But uh, as far as, as new work or, or, newly number ones is uh, I got to go with Deja, Deja, Deja Thoris number number one. It, we're up to volume four of Deja Thoris, who is, you know, the, the princess of Mars. It's, it's not, you know, a real intelligent story necessarily. Um, it's, it's from a product that's been around for a hundred years, but the uh, writer, Amy Chu and the, the artist uh, Pesquale Colano, um, are, are really doing their best to bring this into to, into modern terms. I mean, there's the ridiculous the ridiculousness of of her Deja Thoris out there in, in the deserts of Mars, carrying a sword and walking on sand in high heels yeah. and and basically a bikini. Yeah, which is really silly. Um, but uh, Kalana really goes for it, you know. Yeah. But on the other hand, Amy Chu is giving us a character who is rebelling against her patriarchal family, who is exploring science over, you know, superstition, and who is willing to risk everything to save her planet. You know, so you got these two completely opposite approaches to a character in, mm-hmm. in, in word and, and art um, that still somehow comes out to be really uh, entertaining and, uh, you know, and and fun, you know, fun read. You know, it's a yeah, high heeled and scantily clad. What what could possibly go wrong, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> exactly in the desert, yeah. nonetheless. In the desert, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about you, Ben? What's your uh, pick of the week or picks of um, the week? I read um, Nightwing um, thirty eight, I believe it was, and I'll admit that it's more geared towards I would say like other you know fans of Nightwing. Yeah. Um, but I would suggest that if you're interested in it, that one was a good one. It, uh, I believe, continued the story arc, um, and I think it did well. Um, and I look forward to you know reading the next one. In this case, it left a nice little cliffhanger there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I would definitely get into that. As for new arcs, um, once again, for, for Spider-Man or Superman folks, uh, I did read Superman 40 as well. Um, it's always nice to start at the beginning of an arc, I must say. Yeah. Um, so either one of those, I guess I would suggest for the, for this coming week. Yeah. Cause, cause you jumped into uh, Nightwing, right? You haven't been current with it. I haven't been overly current with it. So it, 
it, this one was wasn't terribly like confusing for yeah. being um, for for me just jumping right in. Um, but it, it definitely, it, you know, I could pick it up really quickly. I got what was going on um, without just, you know, obviously with it not having to be laid out for you perfectly. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a good one. Good. Good. Fantastic. Um, for, for me, um, I think it's obvious. I, I would say that my number one pick would be the Swamp Thing Winter Special. Um, thoroughly enjoyed that. Wound up reviewing it for the site. Um, wound up giving it a 10 out of 10, actually, which does not happen very often. I do give out quite a few nines, um, even more eight and a halves, um, but 10 out of 10 is rare. Um, but since we already talked about that, um, I would say my pick would be, uh, would come from Valiant actually with, um, Armstrong and the Vault of Spirits, number one. Um, this was a really fun comic book. Anything that comes out of Valiant, we know is going to be well-written, it's going to be beautifully illustrated, you know, packed with action, excitement, drama, everything you look for in a comic book. You know, the overall quality of their books is very high and it's very consistent. Um, but what's what's often difficult, I think, for new readers is to step into the Valiant universe. Um, a lot of the stories, you know, a lot of the characters, they have rich histories. Um, it's not easy to, to jump in. Um, and every now and then you have these books that say, let me introduce you to a few of my friends. And it works. And whenever Valiant does this, it, for me at least, it doesn't come off as though it's a commercial or any sort of marketing for their other characters. Um, you know, and, and Archer, uh, Armstrong rather, and The Vault of Spirits, number one, perfect example of this. Um, you could know nothing about the Valiant universe jump right in, pick this book up, and you'd have a good time reading it. So, like I said, for me, it works very well. Definitely recommend picking it up. Um, And if you know about Archer and Armstrong or uh, Quantum and Woody or you're you're a fan of Faith, you're definitely going to like this book. Even if you don't, I really think that you're going to enjoy it as well. So that's my pick of the week. Um, And how about we look into next week? Is there anything that we're looking forward to? Dave, why don't you go first? Well, I, I got my usual favorites are coming up, too, my okay. usual favorites. Angelic is finishing up the arc with uh, number six. And, you know, Flying Monkeys. I, I was on yes. board with Flying Monkeys from episode one. Mm-hmm. And the great thing about this this uh, this series is that, it, as silly as it sounds, is really, you know, a, a deeper mythic analysis behind it that uh, that I've, I've really enjoyed throughout. Um and the other one that I like is is nearing the end as well. It's slots number five, and and this okay. is really, um, you know, more of a human story, more of a a family in crisis story, um, and you know, with this this kind of down on his luck guy. It's a really unusual character, and I really appreciate it. But the the big one that that I'm I'm looking forward to more than anything. Thing, which sounds crazy and it's yeah. really not typical of me but i'm, I'm looking for uh lockjaw number one really you know because it's like the big fluffy dog that uh, can teleport i mean yeah it's just awesome and now, now here's the problem though mm-hmm. you know i have looked at let's without naming names exactly uh a similar appearance of this beloved character yeah that, that, that could have gone either way, mm-hmm. okay? And fortunately, his appearance, Lockjaw's appearance, was the best thing about this title. Gotcha. Um, let's hope that, uh, you know, his own title doesn't crash his burn, and crash and burn as his, you know, as the, uh, as the televised appearance uh, did. Um, I wish him well. I hope it's wonderful. Uh, but uh, I've had my hopes dashed against the rocks uh, fairly recently, and I'm, I'm still staying from it. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell <laughs> you're hurting a little bit. And, and that's okay. That just means you're passionate. And uh, I'm hoping for you as well that this works out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because when you're happy, I'm happy, Dave. That's how that's I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ben, what, what are you looking forward to? Uh, number, well, the first thing I'm interested in is uh, Port of Earth number four. Oh yeah, um, 
I'm yeah, very yeah. pumped about that one. I've enjoyed this series um, the second I read it. Um, so I'm really excited to have the next chapter in that, um, as I think both of you are. Oh, yeah. Um, the other one I'm very interested in, um, just because I've enjoyed all of uh, DC's new um, the new characters there, is Sideways number one. Nice. Um, that one I'm, I'm very much looking forward to as well, just to see how the next one turns out kind of deal. So, And... I'm going to throw it out there. I'm kind of out of the loop with it, but there's a new uh, Old Man Wolverine coming out. Is Or Old Man Logan. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, I'm a little out of the loop with that, but I always enjoy Old Man Logan. It's oh, yeah. always a good one. Did you so. um, did you pick up Old Man Hawkeye? Did you get to read that? I haven't even touched Old Man Hawkeye. It was it was pretty good. Um, we're, next week, issue two comes out. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, I've heard mixed reviews. Um, fans of Old Man Logan say they like it, but it's too familiar. I picked mm-hmm. it up. I hadn't read any Old Man Logan. You know, I'll be yep. you know straight with you. Um, mm-hmm. But I got this awesome, you know, Mad Max vibe. I was really digging it. Again, that was a book that issue number one rather was what very well written, very well illustrated. So I think number two is going to be good as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be right up there, and I completely agree. Um, I too am looking forward to Sideways number one. Um, you know, part of the DC's New Age of Heroes. So far, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, Silencer, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I did like uh, what was the first one, Damage, right? Damage. Yeah. Um, Damage I did like Damage a lot. I'm looking forward to Sideways. Um, I'm also looking forward to there's another. Um, Dark Knight's metal story coming out, Dark Knight's Rising, The Wild Hunt. You know, I just, I can't get enough of this event. Um, I don't know if some readers feel differently. I feel as though if you're a DC fan and you liked any of the Dark Knight's metal stuff, you pretty much liked everything um, so far because it's it's been consistent. Definitely looking forward to Port of Earth as well. Um, first three issues so far have been fantastic. Um, I think we're really... You know, the story is really starting to develop. So issue four on, I, I feel like it's they're going to be fantastic books. Um, we also also have uh, Kick-Ass number one coming out from Image next week. Um, looking forward to that. Um, I believe that there's a, a new character here, um, which we'll, I'm sure we'll get into next week. We'll probably wind up talking about a little bit. Um, yeah, it's... Again, we're going to have another uh, really good week uh, next week, I think. Um, Aftershock is also coming out with uh, Cold War number one. Sounds like a fantastic book. I'm definitely going to pick that up. But, yeah, there is, uh, there's a lot to look forward to. A lot to look forward to. And uh, with that out of the way, I think that that concludes this week's show. Um, so if you like what we're doing, please be sure to like and share this episode as well as subscribe to the podcast. Be sure to visit thebrazenbull.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and check out our Patreon page. Until next week, guys.